These are binding posts. Basically what they are is when a device needs you to connect wires to it, uh, typically fork or ring terminals, you would just take the cap off, put your fork or ring terminal on, and then you've got little threads on here, thread this on, and then just tightening this down makes a good connection. That current will run through the post here, through this body. Typically the body is here so you can mount it on a metal case without the uh, threaded rod here shorting on the case. So it's isolated, but it'll run through and then underneath here you would take this off, put another ring terminal on this end, and then it would um, be clamped by this and then go off to your device inside of your case. So binding posts are very important. Typically everything that is uh, sort of high current will use binding posts instead of uh, plugs or um, you know soldered connections. My problem with binding posts though is they are expensive. So I had to buy these for a project on Amazon and they cost me about 20 bucks for 10 of them. When I finally got them, I put them in my project and I realized this stud is actually not long enough for what I need. So I thought, there's really nothing to this. It is actually just a base that accepts an M6 nut, another base piece here to isolate your stud, and then a stud, a couple of nuts, a couple of washers, and a cap with threads. So why can't we just order our own parts and make our own custom binding posts? Well, a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, these are probably steel, but the better ones are made out of copper and they are plated with tin for have, to have high conductivity. Another alternative would be to use brass. If you can see inside here, the threads are brass. Well, why don't we just order brass parts then? These are the components that I bought. I got these from AliExpress, and at the outset, the price is quite a bit higher than just buying binding posts, but I plan on keeping these in stock for a long time, and you get way more parts than you need to make the equivalent amount of binding posts. So I, I believe I can make about uh, twice or maybe three times the amount of binding posts and what's even better than that is I can make them in custom lengths so this is just m6 brass nuts these are m6 brass washers theoretically not necessary but I like having them and these are m6 brass threaded rod if you live near a hobby shop or something, you can get these uh, in there as well, but you probably pay a little bit more. Buying them directly from a Chinese vendor will take a lot longer, um, but they will be a lot cheaper. But what about the plastic parts? To keep things simple, I just made my parts basically be two parts. So on the commercial binding posts, you've got one base piece, a second base piece, um, which just fit inside each other, and then a cap. I just made one base piece and one cap. So you would print two base pieces and have them facing away from each other and tighten them together and then you would have a cap. So this is the first cap I designed uh, and as you can see you can sink one of these uh, brass nuts into it and here's the base piece which you can sink a brass nut into it. But then I realized um, that these big chunky caps are really nice to use but they take up Quite a bit of space so I made a um, so this is the regular size this would be the uh, mini size so it still has a little bit of a gripping area here same thing as the other one you can uh, sink in a m6 nut into it and then here is a micro size because I needed it even smaller um, and what I like about these things is that your threaded rod will actually go quite a distance in because the cap is very thin on the surface so as you can see it goes almost all the way to the edge of the cap so you can have a really long uh, end of your threaded rod. For the base piece this is the regular size with a nice uh, rounded edge and flange so it looks really good and then here is the narrow size and it's actually made in the shape of a hex 
because then if you have very little space, you know, you can just install this with the flat end towards the side. And then, yeah, all you need to do is you sink your M6 brass nuts into them. And you need to cut your M6 brass rod to length, and then you assemble. I also made sure that the M6 nuts will stick out just a little bit so that your terminals or your ring terminals will come and touch this directly. Same thing for the base. And I also made sure that you can print these sitting just like this. There's a nice ramp for it to climb, uh, for the 3D printer to, to climb to get to the center uh, so that you can have a nice ironed surface on the top if you wish. Uh, this one came out a little rough so I had to sand it a little bit but your printer settings will differ. So let's assemble one. All right, so I got all the parts together here to make a um, micro version. Uh, so yeah, basically all it is is you first sink in your M6 nut into the cap. Should be a nice tight fit. You can put a dab of CA glue if you want it to uh, sit at a specific height or if you want it in there much more permanently, but uh, I made them kind of tight fitting. Uh, so there's another one and there's another one but it also depends on the tolerance of your 3d printer uh, quite obviously and what kind of filament you're using because some filament does change shape a little bit so for example these two were printed at the same time but this one is tighter than this one all right and then all you need is you have your cap thread it in however far you want throw a washer onto it like that and then you have your top piece, your top body piece, you have to have the nut facing towards the cap. So thread this in. So that goes all the way up to here. And then you have your bottom cap, the, the nut facing outside. Thread this in. And then you have, you would have your, your casing obviously in between these. And then you have a washer washer and then the the base nut for putting your uh, your ring terminal to lock your ring terminal to the bottom so that is it let's put it onto a uh, a case of some sort and let's run some current through it all right i happen to have made a few pcbs a while ago that have the right size holes uh, now these are going to be isolated from the holes so don't expect current to come through the holes i'm just showing you what's potential what's the, the the potential use of this and so if you look on the back this is positive on this side this is negative so i'm going to install one of my custom built ones and one of the commercial ones and it's not really to show that mine are better than the commercial ones just to show you that um they're about the same, except mine are custom length and they're custom made for whatever I need. So the first thing you would do is you would roll off the uh, pinch nut on the bottom, the two washers, and then you can take off the base piece. And again, you can keep the top piece on. I'm just gonna put this maybe on this edge here, like this, and that'll sit flat. And then you screw on the base piece and again, this would, uh, your hole would have to be a little bit bigger than this one, just if you want it isolated. So there we go. So that's now tight. See, this is, can't go anywhere. And then you would put your washers on here and then your connection. So here I have my positive connection. I'll put another washer on there and then, oops, and then put on the pinch nut on the bottom now if you have a like a wire wheel or something you can go and just hit the edge of your cut to length uh, m6 threaded rod but there we go and then you would tighten that down you can use a little wrench and then i like the slim one because the hex here you can hold on to while you tighten the other side so um so that is the um this is my custom one and then you know if you wanted to make connections you would just open this and then connect stuff to it so that is that a little hard to get it threaded in sometimes, that's why I would add a chamfer uh, on on the stud. Here is the commercial one. Commercial one works quite the same. So you take off the bottom nuts and then you put you would put the base on here. So run this down like this, put the base on here. Now I'm gonna put it flat side uh, simply because 
uh, this little shoulder doesn't fit in this hole and then you can thread in the um, base nut so their base is separate from their assembly and then you can put on your connection and then your washer and then you can put your little pinch nut there we go so that's two connections done and then you can see the differences here see mine's a bit taller uh, but I did that by purpose to have a lot more space inside if I need to and this one there we go and then now you would just make your connections so I have a little uh, light here I got in a mailbag video uh, it's like a off-road light so you can take the cap off completely if you had um, you know ring terminals but I only have spade terminals here so I will just loosen up the top a little bit and then clamp it down like so and then same thing with the commercial one and clamp it down and then turn on my power supply and there we go so it works just fine so basically your wires underneath are bringing in the voltage uh, and current and it's coming through the m6 uh, threaded portion Whoop, the commercial one got loose there you would probably tie this down with a uh, with a tool but you know it's just a demo and then you have your device and so that's it uh, for now this it only exists in m6 hardware i'm going to put links in the description where you can get the m6 threaded rod uh, brass nuts uh, and washers and uh, i will also link to my designs which will be open source and then it'll be up to you if you want to modify it for m8 m10 etc I am very likely going to be designing uh, M, at least an M8, probably an M10 version as well. So look for that in the future. Um, but yeah, it'll be up to you if you want to modify it, do whatever you want with it. That's the cool part about open source. If something doesn't work the way you want, you do it. Thanks for watching.